My name is William Justice. Today, I'm gonna to show you my new power grid system to help you easily set up video grids with animation in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. A while back, I created a video about making a video grid in DaVinci Resolve. Ever since then, I've been wanting to do it a little bit better. Well, with my power grid system, I've created an updated version that should be a lot easier and faster to use. You can customize the rows and columns, set it to be whatever you want. Adjust margins. Set the border radius. Change your background or background color. And we can add some animations. So you see these video grids everywhere now. So I've tried to make this easy to use and really, really simple so you can quickly get your grid set up. You basically go to buildjustice.com, configure your grid settings, rows and columns, push a button to download it and drag it right into Fusion. Once you connect up your media, you're ready to go. If you enjoy my content, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more fun content with DaVinci Resolve. If you have any comments, questions, feedback, or if you just want to say hi, leave a comment down below. I'd, I'd really love to hear from you and I will definitely get right back to you. I've created the grid structure in Fusion, but don't get intimidated. I've made it really easy to use. Once you get the grid in there, you just connect up your media and that's about it. And you can do some more advanced stuff later if you want to, but it's not really necessary. The first step to creating the grid is to set up a Fusion composition. To do that, we're gonna click Effects Library, then click Effects from the Toolbox menu, take the Fusion composition and drag it into our timeline. And we can take it and stretch it out to whatever length we want, then click Fusion at the bottom of the screen to get into Fusion. Okay, now we have our Fusion composition set up. Now that we're in Fusion, let's go to buildjustice.com to create our grid. We're at my website, buildjustice.com. There's several ways to get to the grid generator. You can click Fusion Generators right here at the top and choose Video Grid Generator. You can click this graphic right here to get to the Power Grid Generator, it's the same thing. And I've also added a new page in Resources called All Videos. I'm gonna be filling in everything right here. So this hopefully should make things a little bit easier to find if you're looking for one of my past videos or something new. Everything's gonna be listed here once I get this built out. Let's go back to the home page and click the power grid, and this will take us to the generator. We just have a couple of settings here. It's really simple. You can choose the rows and columns. So if you want it to be eight by eight, you could do that. We're gonna do a three by three. There's a scale option, which you can set it to fit or none. I'll explain this in just a little bit. We're gonna leave it at fit for now. The basic is a static grid with no animation, and you choose advanced if you're gonna be animating the grid and moving things around a little bit. The reason I broke this out is the advanced tends to run a little bit slower. It takes a little more time to render. So if you're not doing any animation, just choose the basic. It's gonna be faster. So you can see here, that basically this is what you, this little graphic shows you what happens here. It's gonna generate this node structure. You're gonna attach your media and it's gonna spit out this grid right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our grid now. It's gonna, we're gonna do a three by three grid, scale to fit, basic with no animation. I'll show you the animation in just a bit. We're gonna click generate download grid settings and it downloaded our grid file right here. So what do you do with this file? Let me show you. All right, so we have our grid downloaded. To use it, all we need to do is take it and drag it right into the Fusion composition. And you can see here we have our grid structure. So you can see we have um, one, 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 two, one, three. So this is row one, row two, row three, and then you have the columns. So to set up the grid, all we need to do is take media, drag it into the node area, and connect it up to the input of the, on each of the grid positions. Let me drag the media in real quick. We're gonna take each of these media nodes and connect them up to the grid positions. And you'll see the grid is starting to fill in. And there we go, we have a basic grid setup. Next, I wanted to go through some of the options you have for customizing the grid. First thing you can click is this grid control um, node right here. This gives you two settings. You can adjust the margin, which is the spacing between each of the media clips in the grid. So we can make it a wider margin or actually you can take, have no margin and all the clips will be butted up against each other. So you can change that dynamically here. And then you can add a border radius. So if you wanna have a little curved look, you can do that too. So you don't have to have the hard edge. You can kind of have a little rounded corner. We can change the background right here. You can put a, really you can put whatever you want to in here, but uh, obviously you can change the color. You could, um, you could make it transparent if you wanted to, whatever. We're gonna go ahead and leave ours as black. The radius out and bring the margin back down. Okay, so each of the grid nodes, we're gonna click on that. There's some settings. Um, the, the, this is the basic grid, so the row and column and row span and column span, column span do not work. Um, those are for the advanced mode. So there's a scale and position, which I'll show these when we get to the advanced mode. 
By default, the image automatically scales to fit within this area. You can adjust the size if you need the image to be bigger or smaller, and you can adjust the position if you need to move which part of the image is being seen. So you can do that for the images. So if we want to move these clouds around, that's in position one, three. So we click that right there. We could make them a little bit bigger and adjust the position. Um, there's also an angle if you, if you needed to rotate it. So the last thing is there's a blend so you can have these fading in and out as you need. Um, also, I added a quick note here on the top. Um, it's definitely not required, but if you feel like it, you can definitely buy me a cup of coffee. Um, there's a link, of, also a link on my website, billjustice.com. Um, I put this in here because from time to time, I've had people inquire about how to donate to me. So I set up this link for anyone that's interested, but for everyone else, honestly, um, I really just appreciate you watching my videos, commenting, liking, sharing, and I hope that you're able to do something fun with what I'm making. So I just really appreciate everyone's support. Okay, now let's create a, an advanced grid with a little bit of animation. I'll show you how to do that. Let's go back to the timeline. And in the timeline, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the media pool. And one of the things is the way we did the set of the last one, when you just drag those clips into the uh, fusion area, it's hard to sequence them and set which part of which clip is gonna happen in what, in what order. So what you can do is you can take them and we go ahead and put them on the timeline. So where it's a three by three grid, so we're gonna drag nine clips onto the timeline right here. And we can adjust the positioning of when things are gonna happen and line up the timing of all these clips. So I'm gonna go ahead and make them a little bit smaller for now. So we can get more on there. Okay, so we have our nine clips loaded up. And this is, this is how you can adjust when the clips come and go if you really need to have certain things happen at a certain time. What we can do is we can go to the very beginning of this, like say right here, where all these clips are in the beginning. Select them all, like that. And we're just gonna trim them. So you hit shift and the open bracket. It's gonna cut that side of it. And we're gonna go to the end here. And we're gonna hit shift and close bracket. It's gonna cut that. So all these clips are the same length. I should have nine of them here. So now that we have them lined up in sequence, we can highlight them all, like that. We're gonna right click and say new fusion clip. So that take, took all those clips with the order and the sequencing and it put it into one fusion clip. So let's go into fusion and see what we have. So you see we have all, this is all of our media and it's automatically in here and it's gonna be timed properly. So for this one, we're, we're not gonna do these merges. So let's just get rid of them. I'm gonna delete that and delete the media out. Let's go back to my website and we're gonna create an advanced grid this time. We're back at the grid generator and all we need to do if we want to create an animated grid is click the advanced option. Now let's click generate and download grid settings and it downloaded a new file for us right there. We just need to drag that into the node area of Fusion and connect everything up. Here's our downloaded file. We're gonna drag that into Fusion and move it over just a bit. And let's connect up our nodes. I'm gonna move them into position. Take the output of each media and connect it to the input of the node area. Let's hit uh, two on the media out so we can kind of see what we got going. Okay, so animations are really simple. So let's say we want to animate this mountain one. So we're gonna click grid one, three. You can see that this is in row one, column three. So if we wanted to actually move that and have it move around the screen, we can adjust the column and it will move around. If obviously column four is off the screen, but we can move it back. You can have each of these blocks move around by adjusting the row and column. We're gonna keep them in place for now. Okay, let's take a look at this, this bridge clip right here. This is in row two, column one. Obviously, if we wanted to move it over, we could adjust the column. If we wanted to move it up, we can adjust the row, it'll move up. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on row two, column one. So the column span and row span set how far each of these positions overlaps to the left, right, up, or down. So if you add one to the column span, it's gonna say it's gonna span over to the right one column. If you set it to two, it's gonna go over two columns. So you can see like that. And th you can animate this property just like the other one to get things to move around a little bit. Everything still works. You can go back to the grid control and if you wanna bump up the margins, we can. Get a little thicker margins in there. Go back. Um, we're gonna set it back to one, or actually we're gonna set it back to zero. The row span and column span will actually go negative. So let's go back to the row one, column three right here. If we wanted this image to go over to the left, we would do the column span negative. So that would be a negative one. It's, it's gonna go one column to the left and negative two would bring it two columns over. All right, let's reset that. 
I'm gonna set the column span, we're gonna set the column span back to zero. Let's talk about scaling position. So we're gonna go to row three, column three. That's this element right down here. And we're gonna stretch it all the way up to the top. So to do that, we just need to take the row span and go negative. And it's gonna go up and up and up. And you'll notice that the image is not really filling in. Let's go ahead and make it minus one. So that should go one space up and it should fill that in. The problem is, is it's scaling to the width of this image. That's because it's not gonna crop any on the width. If you want it to scale differently, you check scale and you can choose height. It's gonna crop off the right and the left to fill in the space. And you can use the positioning to adjust it if you need a different part of it to be shown. If we wanted this image to fill from here all the way to the bottom right of the screen, all we need to do is we have the, col the row span of negative one, which is gonna get up here, and we're gonna take the column span, span and set that to negative one. And you'll see what's happening here is because the height we're scaling to the height, it's not really filling in. So we're gonna have to go back and scale to the width and then that would fit in there. So some of these you may need to adjust them and it's keyframable depending on how you're animating and how things are moving, you can adjust how that scales. The last option is the position. So you'll notice that the image is set up to be centered right here in the middle of the grid. That's gonna be the scale position. So if we size it, it's gonna be sizing in and out from that this point right in the middle. Um, if you set the position to center screen, it's gonna, the image is gonna be in the center of the screen. Now, it, typically when you do that, you might wanna set it to scale of none. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna have the image, really the image is on the full screen and it's just showing you part of it. So you'll see here, if we take the um, column span and move it down, you'll notice the image is not stretching. We can move it all the way this way. If we wanna reveal the full image, we can take the row span and put it all the way up to the top. And we'll go minus, minus two on that. That's how you would see the full image and it's just, it's not gonna scale it. So those are some of the scaling different, the scaling options you have. Now the last thing, let's see, let's reset this. We're gonna put it zero, zero. So the last thing here is that there's a little issue with the way things work because of the way these, these are merged together. You'll notice row one, column two is gonna always be on top of row one, column one. So if we take, take the grid one, two, and we, we call span it to the left, it's gonna be sitting on top of that one because it's right here. The problem comes in is if you need to have this one span over to the right, we're gonna call column span over to the right, it doesn't work. And that's because really there's a, a merge inside of each of these. If you ever wanna see what's in here, you can double click on it and you can kind of see how I set it up. If you're gonna do this case and if, if you're gonna have this overlapping situation, what I've done is I've added an extra output. So let's move this over and we're gonna add a merge right after this last grid. There's this output right here, and this is the output before it's merged in with the composition. So we can take this output and drag it right here, and it's gonna be effectively on top of everything that comes before this spot right here. This is a situation where you're trying to figure out what's on top of another thing. You can always take this output and drag it and put it on top. You may have to do some things with setting the blend on and off to hide and show things. If we wanted, if we wanted to take this center grid element and put it on top of everything, we go to the grid position two, two. So let's create another merge and we'll take the output of grid two, two and drag it right into that one. Okay, so this element right here right now is on top of all of this stuff. So now the grid, now the grid two, two is on top of everything. Let's have it expand to fill this area right here on the right hand side of the screen. So we're gonna have to do a few things to do that. We're gonna have to row span and column span and we have to take its position and move it up to the top. So let's go to the very first frame and we're gonna keyframe the row and column. We're gonna keyframe the row span and column span. Go over a few frames, and we're gonna move it up to row one, and we're gonna set the row span to two. Okay, you notice that really we don't see anything, and that's because we need to adjust the scale. So if we set the scale to height, you'll see that we fill this area right here. So that looks pretty good. Let's see what we have. We have it filling the height of this column. Now let's have it move over one column and fill these, this area right here. So let's move over a few frames and we're gonna keyframe the column span, move over about uh, five or six more frames and we're gonna set the column span to one. And you'll see it fills that area now. And that's the basics of it. You can really pretty much do whatever you want. Um, obviously these grids can get a lot more complex if you have a lot more grid elements. Um, I wanted to show you something simple. It's really easy starting with the basic one, but if you wanna get some complex and do some interesting things, there's a lot of animation opportunities for you to have your grid shift around and show different things and highlight different media clips, depending on what you're wanting to do. 
Okay, that's the power grid. If you have any comments or feedback, leave it down below. If you use the video grid, send me a link. I'd love to see what you did with it. If you enjoy my videos, make sure you subscribe and like this video. I really appreciate everyone's support. I have a lot more videos planned and I can't wait to get to them. Thanks for watching. Thank you.